In this lecture, we are going to discuss another feature descriptor, uh, which is known as histogram of oriented gradients or HOG. Uh, so before the advent of deep learning, HOG one, was one of the most prominent feature descriptors for object detection applications. Uh, the original paper of HOG uh, was in fact written for the purpose of pedestrian detection and it was in 2005. So until 2010 many papers demonstrated HOG as one of the prominent descriptors for the obstacle detection and recognition applications and many state of the art results were achieved in the Pascal uh, VOC datasets. So in this lecture we are going to cover the original HOG algorithm which was mentioned in the Trix and Delors paper in 2005. Uh, using roughly the same parameters that were used in the original HOG paper for the application of pedestrian detection. Uh, but there are going to be many hyperparameters in the HOG descriptor and those hyperparameters values can be changed depending on the application. So let's begin our discussion of the HOG descriptor algorithm. So the first step in the HOG descriptor, again uh, we are describing a patch around a feature point or an image patch. So this is our original image and there's a patch inside this image of dimension R cross C. So there are R rows and C columns. So the first step in the HO descriptor is gamma correction. And although we didn't discuss it in the course, the gamma correction, it's one of the image processing methods to actually uh, roughly speaking improve the contrast or enhance the intensity values um, of the pixels in an image. And it's, it's one of the image processing techniques um, for image enhancement. And you can read about it in the literature, just a straight formula. So the first step in the algorithm is to apply the gamma correction. But usually the performance gains of gamma correction are minor. So the performance gains are minor and thus in most of the um, applications of uh, HOG descriptor, the first step of gamma correction is usually ignored. But if you follow the original paper, then the first step to apply on image patch or you can just apply the, uh, the, the gamma correction to the entire image at once as we saw in the previous uh, lecture of the brief descriptor as well that we apply the Gaussian smoothing to the entire image at once rather than applying the smoothing uh, to the individual patches again and again. So the step two so as the name implies the descriptor is a histogram of oriented gradients so the second step of the algorithm is to is to compute the gradients. So we'll need both the magnitude as well as the orientation. And the previous lectures in the edge direction lectures in the grain computation lectures we saw that how we can compute the magnitude of a gradient at any pixel in an image and also the orientation of any pixel in an image using any of the uh, operators to take edges in images, be it so well private or any 1D uh, or any first order method for that matter. So the, sex, uh, so the second step is to compute the gradients. And basically by computing the gradients, HOG descriptor at large essentially captures the geometric appearance of an image patch. So if we have an image patch, then HOG will capture the geometric semantics of this image patch. Like what is the geometry of the features in this image? And it does so by computing the gradients and then computing the histogram of the gradients in that image patch. So HOG uh, uses a simple first order method like the Sobel for the computation of the gradient. And obviously as we saw in the previous edge lectures, if we want to 
uh, get both the orientation and magnitude, then we cannot use a second order methods. We will have to use a first order methods. So HUG uses simple first order methods uh, for grain computation. In particular, the HUG uses Sobel operator and it uses 1D Sobel operator. We can just as well use the 3 cross 3 Sobel operator that we learned in the previous lectures. So the 3 cross 3 Sobel operator we already learned in the previous lectures and a 1D Sobel operator. So we have X operator and we have Y operator. So the operator to compute the X gradient is going to be negative 1, 0, 1 and the operator to compute the Y gradient is going to be negative 1, 0, 1. So these are the filters to compute the 1D X and Y gradients and just convolve the image. So we have an input image which is convolve this image as we discussed in the previous lectures to get the X and Y gradients of the image. So the performances are roughly similar if we use 1D that is uh, 3 cross 1 or 1 cross 3 Sobel operator or if you use a full Sobel operator which is 3 cross 3 for both the X and Y gradient computation. Uh, so the performances are similar and thus uh, typically uh, we can use the 1D Sobel operators which are going to be computationally efficient as well. So obviously as you can see convolving the image with a 1D filter is going to be computationally significantly efficient as compared to convolving it with general 2D filter of dimension 3 cross 3. Furthermore, uh, before the gradient compilation step, as we have seen in all the previous applications uh, that before we compute the gradient, we typically apply the smoothing. So before this step, we can apply Gaussian smoothing. And for that matter, we can apply any of the advanced smoothing methods as well that we have learned in the lecture. For example, we have learned Kovara, we have learned uh, bilateral filter and uh, rather than applying Gaussian smoothing, we can just apply any other smoothing method as well. Uh, but typically applying Gaussian smoothing uh, before the grain computation step uh, doesn't lead to uh, you know significantly different results and thus usually it is ignored to save the computation time because computation of the HOG is computationally expensive um, operation. So we would like to save as many uh, computations as possible when computing the HOG uh, descriptor of the image patches. So typically the first step is gamma correction but, but usually it is ignored. The second step is uh, to apply Gaussian smoothing and then come to the gradients but to save computations we can is, skip the smoothing step as perhaps for example uh, typically as we have seen in the previous applications usually the blob computation or the um, or, or any other different application we typically apply smoothing to images so we, we may save a copy of that image and incorporate it over here. So it depends on the implementation, it's an implementation detail, uh, but usually the gains are minor if any and in the original uh, paper it was found that uh, in fact omission of the smoothing step performed better as compared uh, to when we applied the smoothing. So we'll just discuss the magnitude and the orientation computation for the sake of completeness. Uh, so for each pixel in the image after applying either 3 cross 3 or 1 cross 3 and 3 cross 1 Sobel operators. Uh, we get the X gradient and the Y gradient of an image. So we can represent them by IX and IY to denote the X and Y gradient of the image. And now we can compute the magnitude at any pixel uh, P. We can compute the magnitude image as square root of IX P square plus IYP square and the orientation is given by A tan or tan inverse of IYP divided by IXP and we convert the results into 0 to 180 degree range.
So we can also uh, use eight and two function, which gives us the orientation from zero to three sixty. But as we discussed in many previous lectures, typically in images, um, a particular direction and suppose the direction are considered to be uh, th the same, and there's no clear advantage of using zero to three sixty. So we just use zero to one hundred eighty uh, degree directions. So the theta p belongs to zero to one hundred eighty. So the third step, which is the key step of the descriptor, is to compute the histogram of the gradients. So once we have computed the gradient, uh, we have two different matrices, MP, which is a magnitude of the gradient at pixel P, and theta P, which is the orientation of the gradient at pixel p. So once we have computed these two uh, matrices, we can now begin the process of histogram computation. So histogram is going to need uh, these two values as input. So in the original paper, uh, which was intended for the pedestrian detection application, the image patches where we apply all these methods were of the size 128 cross 64. That is, we had 64 columns and 128 rows. So the method we are going to describe, we are going to use this dimension as a reference, but just to let you know, uh, HOG can be applied to image patches of different sizes as well. For example, the ratio of 1 is to 2, that is uh, the ratio of, of the width to height is 1 is to 2, and it was used because of the dimensions of the uh, pedestrians in an image. So if we have an image of a pedestrian, Obviously, we can see that the width would be much smaller than the height. So that's why the ratio of 1 is to 2 was proposed in the original paper for the pedestrian detection applications. But uh, for example, if we are using it for general obstacle detection, for example, a vehicle on road, then maybe we can have 2 is to 1 or any other, you know, we can go with a square patch as well. Uh, but again, we are going to carry out the discussion using 1 to 8 cross 64 as a reference size of the patch. So now we will discuss the steps involved in the computation of the histogram.